Hey, Brandon here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the 2023 NFL Draft Rookie Report. Today, we're going to be talking about an exciting running back from Ole Miss running back, Zach Evans. Hot player right now. He's going in a lot of top drafts and we're going to discuss it all here tonight. Here with my good friend and co-host, Jason DiRienzo. He is a recent graduate of the Scouting Academy and also a co-founder of the Debbie Watch. Jason, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. Really excited to talk about Zach Evans with you. Yeah, we're going to look at his 2022 film. Me and Jason have looked at some All-22, the 22 yeah. film. The All-22 film is hitting our folders, which is always nice this time of year. We're going to be talking it. about his draft capital. We're going to talk about his future dynasty value and where maybe we see him going after the rookie draft and what you can expect for a year or two of production on your dynasty roster. So hit that subscribe button. Jason, I'm sure you know this. This is our 13th uh, rookie report we've done so far, and we're just getting started. Um, it goes quick. Yeah, it does go quick. So we're going to do shows like this for all of the rookies that we think that you'll be drafting in your first three or four rounds next, you know, come April. So let's get right into it, man. Let's talk about mm -hmm. Zach Evans, six foot, 215 pounds. And like I just mentioned, he is a hot commodity right now. People are very excited about Zach Evans uh, on the his three year career at Ole Miss. He will be a junior. He had 282 yards, uh, 1,962 um, I'm sorry, 282 attempts for 1,900 yards, 17 touchdowns with a seven point yards per catch or per run. Um, you know, which is great. Seven, yeah. you know, from the box score watching that, that's good stuff. He only had 26 receptions uh, through his three uh, year career. So he's not really been used a lot out of the backfield. But we're going to have some uh, career stats here from PFF. We'd like to kind of include these in the show, give you a little bit of insight. Uh, zone and gap. He ran 60% of his runs were zone. 33%, which is gap, which is nice, adds a little versatility to uh, his ability. Uh, I'm sure NFL scouts will like that. His yards after contact, 4.2, um, which is pretty good. Um, Jason, looking at his three-year career here, uh, back in 2020, he had a uh, yards uh, after contact, 5.76, 2021, 4.3, and 2022, 3.5. So it's kind of been getting a little less each year just wanted to point that out missed tackles forced he got 17 on 290 attempts that's a 25 percent so for every uh four every fourth run he basically uh made someone miss a tackle so his elusive rating 59 and a half which is kind of on the lower end of the scale and his overall pff overall run grade was 79.7 which is just a little above average mm -hmm. so those are the stats any thoughts comments uh, elusive rating stands out a little bit, but the fact of the yards after contact got worse every single year, that is not something you want to see from running back. Yeah, so uh, let's get to it, man. Let's get to the scouting report. We're going to talk about um, you know what we see on film. Like we said, at the end of the show, guys, I'm going to be putting two, putting two links to some game films that I've produced on Zach Evans. So right after the show, you'll be able to go right to them and see these films. So here's my scouting report. I'm going to just take some jots and notes here. We would like to break down these prospects into five traits, vision and Patience is what we look at first. It's the hallmark of any good running back. And I'm just going to come out and say it, Jason. I'm, I'm, I'm not impressed with what I saw, um, especially looking at the all 22 angles. I felt as though he kind of took what was given to him. Um, I didn't see, I, you know, I'm always looking for wow moments, and especially yeah. when plays are never, you know, most, you know, mo a lot of the plays, I'm not going to say most, a lot of the plays don't pan out as, as you know, they're supposed to go. So you need to make adjustments. You need to be able to see cutback links. You need to be able to make adjustments on your own and, and you know, take advantage of what you see. And I just didn't see a lot of that. Am, am I off base on that? Not at all. As a matter of fact, you, you asked me a couple of weeks ago, you know, what I think of Zach Evans and about his vision. I was like, oh, I think it's pretty good. I don't, I don't mind it. That's watching, you know, Saturdays. Once you do the deep dive, it's a complete paradigm shift. I did not like the vision. He just doesn't seem to have a blueprint of a, print, a plan of where he wants to go. He runs into the back of his offensive lineman quite a bit. And there was one play, it was an outside zone stretch play, where he could have cut in and he mm -hmm. just got demolished behind the line of scrimmage. So I think the vision and the patience needs vast improvement for, if he's going to succeed at the next level. Yeah, I thought sometimes he wasn't patient enough. He just shot out like a rocket and ran into the thing trying yeah, was, to find his way. Both. You sometimes, know, so. sometimes it was like that, and sometimes he was just too quick, and he would just get pinned down, and that's that's not good either. Yeah. So his foot, his footwork and short area quickness um, is probably another you know obviously important trait for a running back. I thought he had some quick feet at times, but I didn't feel like he showcased it enough. I really felt that once he got past the line of scrimmage. 
you know, he never really tried to make anybody miss. He was always kind of maybe using his physicality. And, you know, I saw this back when he was a freshman. I did a whole game film of every run that he had as a freshman. And I kind of came away with the same thing. And here I am three years later kind of seeing the same thing. I feel like he's more of a straight line runner. And if you don't have that elusiveness to to make guys miss and drop cut and move and, and shake and bake, I just don't know how excited, you know, of a prospect I'm going to be for you in the NFL. Uh, yeah, I agree with that too. I mean, I don't think the footwork is necessarily impressive to me either. I feel like he's more of a pinball type runner where he's just kind of bouncing off and kind of mm-hmm. trying to get what he can and not really creating, just kind of, you know, I don't know, bouncing his way through the trenches mm-hmm. and even on the perimeter, you know, he's it was kind of a chip that he would do, but then he would just get tackled. So I'm not really sure about the footwork. I think he can be elusive, but not not when you mix the elusiveness and the uh, vision. There's no synergy between the two, and that's a problem as well. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, ex- acceleration and speed. I thought he had good acceleration. I think people are excited about his long speed, but I don't think he's got that break-off mm-hmm. ability where he's going to leave people in the dust. But he's got enough acceleration and speed. I just wish he would use it better in better ways than what I see, not running into people, but maybe trying to get away from people. Yeah, I think he's uh I think he's a momentum builder, probably like a mm-hmm. four or five guy type of thing. But uh I mean I, the burst is there. I just wish it was more strategic. Uh the acceleration's pretty good through the second level, but once he gets to the outside perimeter, if he doesn't have the opening to get down the red line and try to make and break whatever he can, he's gonna get stuffed there too. So uh, I, I I like the speed and the acceleration, but I think that he just it's a vision, man. The visions is definitely a problem because he can't even maximize the long speed or acceleration. Yeah, his strength and contact balance is something we're looking at. I mean, look, he's got the big frame. Most people say he's six foot two fifteen. He doesn't look two fifteen to me on the field, but maybe I, I could be wrong. And you know, we'll see at the combine really what he is. If he came in more at like two ten or two oh seven, it wouldn't surprise me. But I mean, it looks like he's got a decent solid mass and density. I just don't think he really uses it. I don't see him moving a lot of piles. Um, his contact balance, I feel like, is okay, but. I know there's elusive ratings in up there and the yards missed tackles forced and, and the yards after contact, but I just don't see a lot of him breaking tackles and continuing and plays moving on. Yeah, at times I saw it and at times I didn't. The inconsistency bothers me too because is that work ethic? Is it something else? I, I don't really know. I'd like to see that switch be on all the time, mm-hmm. and I didn't see that. Um, I, I, I think I'm away unimpressed with the contact balance, but again – I just want to see more consistency from a guy like this. So he had eight receptions in 2022. We talked about having 26 in three seasons. So he was using the pass catching you know, from a PPR standpoint in our dynasty rosters and leagues. You know, I don't, it doesn't mean he can't when he gets there, but he did have some drops on the all 22 films that yeah, we did. watched him. He looked like his hands aren't very natural. But I wanted to just mention one thing before we get to the draft capital section. Um, you know, over his three-year career, he only played four teams that were ranked in the top 25. In 2021, he played Oklahoma State. He was 10 for 34, 3.4 average. In Texas, they were ranked in 2020 in the top 25, one for three for three yards. I think that was early in his career, so you give him a break on that. 2021, he didn't have any. He didn't face any top 25 teams. In 2022, Bama, six for 12, two-point average. Kentucky, nine for 24, 2.7 average. And I know I'm not a box score watcher. I understand that you can't go, you know, a lot of people don't like yards per carry as a way of judging. But hey, listen, if you're the third guy off the board or, or, or you're thinking that he's going to be in your rookie drafts, I'm expecting you to show up at these big games. You know, against the better competition, I want to see some explosive plays and he just didn't do it there. So he had three fumbles also in 2022. Um, and what are your thoughts on him losing to, can we read anything into an incoming freshman and Judkins just coming in and basically splitting the role with him. And and, in a lot of cases, because I made five or six game films of this guy, Quinchon Junkins was in the game when they needed production. It wasn't like he came in in the scrap time. I mean, Junkins took a lot of carries away from him in the middle of these important games. Yeah, for a true freshman to come in and basically outperform Zach Evans at times, that's a big deal. And if Judkins wasn't there, I mean, maybe we'd be telling ourselves a story and trying to figure out a way to kind of forgive Zach Evans for the type of season that he's had, you know, and and maybe on those games like Alabama and the ones that he should have been better at. I'd actually be interested to see how Judkins in those games too. But Mm -hmm. having Judkins come in and produce the way that he did is not a good look. 
for Zach Evans. That that should not have been the case. Evans was what the highly regarded recruit. Oh yeah, could be performing right. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It says a lot about Judkins too. Yeah, good player. So, all right, let's get to his draft capital and fantasy uh, stuff. And uh, his draft capital uh, right now, I mean, if you go to NFL mock draft database.com, that's always a tongue twister for me. Um, you know, he's basically the third guy coming off the board. So, guy, people watching this right now, Jason, they're probably like, holy mackerel, these guys are out of their minds. I mean, he's supposed to be ranked up there high. I just don't see it. I think he's probably around three, four, five guy. I don't see him definitely not a you know day one guy. And 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 round two, I just think there's better options at the running back position in this class. Yeah, I agree with you. Hey, three weeks ago, I was one of those people that thought the same thing until you actually watched the film. And I definitely urge everybody to go to your YouTube channel and check these the film out because honestly, it tells a whole different story. And that's exactly what you want. You want the true, accurate story. And for me, I think he's around three to four type of guy too. Rookie draft selection right now doing the mocks that I've been involved in. He's not getting out of the first round. People are gaga over him. But as we know, draft capital could change that and and you know landing spot as well. But right now he's 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 one of the top you know running backs coming off the board. Yeah, I mean running back is one of those positions where you definitely don't want to leave the draft without grabbing one of these guys. And uh, I could see him late one to mid two. I mean, he's still got a brand regardless of what the film says. So I yeah. can see that happening. Yeah, no worries. All right, fantasy value. Let's say he gets round late round three, draft capital goes to an okay landing spot. You know, what do, what do you think his upside can be in his first two years as a dynasty player? First two years, that changes things a little bit. I think uh, RB4, RB3, there, there's some development that needs to happen. But we've seen this season, Deontay Foreman, Samaj P. Ryan, Tyler Algier is a rookie. I mean, they're all within that top spots, so within top 40, I believe. I think Zach Evans could definitely be there if he lands in the right opportunity. So I think RB2 upside could be there, you know, but that's like four or five years past. Yeah, it's amazing that p ryan is in our even had in this conversation just to it's get it's just crazy guys just stick around you know i mean it's amazing a guy like that is still sticking around yeah, right, so, Foreman, man. yeah yeah exactly um just freaking killed me last week too in the <laughs> dining playoffs bastard all right fantasy player comp i got damian harris here um i like that you know and i think yeah. I feel like he could possibly take the same kind of path Damian Harris is. You know, he goes to New England. He's a guy that's a little bit of buzz. He's now, you know, out of his four-year contract looking for a new home. I believe he's a UDFA next year or a, not a UDFA, a, a free agent. Um, but he he's my comp. Yeah, I like that comp. I think that is probably better than mine. I have Jamal Williams. I could see the the uh, path from what I saw from him in college to where he is now, you know, kind of side by side with DeAndre Swift on the Lions. Um, but I, I don't know if Zach Evans is the RB1 type. I think he's more of a complimentary type of guy. Yeah, I think Jamal Williams' physicality would kick his ass. So. Yeah, at, at this point now, I would agree with that. When he was I'd at like BYU, that. I saw a little bit different. But yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Williams, he's, he's, he's a funny guy. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it. Listen, I am sorry if you came on here excited to come on the show and, you know, get all excited that Zach Evans and, and confirming what you think that, you know, sorry about that. But listen, we're going to give it to you real. That's what these rookie reports are for. It's always good to get a different point of view, make you think a little right. bit, right? You know, don't always Absolutely. go with the herd. Think for yourself. And uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.